Everyone, thank you for being here. This video has been a long time coming, and I'm happy to say today we're going to build the partial cloverleaf. Um, so for those of you that know me on Twitch, or you've seen the other YouTube videos, you've seen that I, I like using this guy around. This is... I just got followed, speaking of Twitch. <laughs> Shout out to whoever just followed me. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not streaming right now. So this is... so. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, this is the partial cloverleaf. This is my design. This is my take on it. And what it is, it's an interchange for getting off the highway. So this is the highway. Imagine that these lanes, right-hand traffic, continue off into the distance. This is your overpass, and these are your, your exits. And you're going to see this in context in just a minute. It's what you want to do when you're not using like a, uh, like a trumpet. You know, these guys are kind of trumpet examples. I didn't build them. Wow, questionable. Um... This one's a little bit better. This is a T interchange. This implies that you're going to continue the highway, but let's say you want to you want to get off the highway and you want to have access to both sides of the highway and you know, this is an exit. So, I'm going to show you how to implement this, how to how to build it, how to implement it. There's going to be a link for this down in the description. If you want to use mine, you can, but I'd recommend using mine as a as a way to deconstruct what I've built if anything. You know, feel free to plop it around. Oh, I got some new tram tracks that I was messing with, but that's not the point today. The point is, let's let's say you want to do a heavy road coming off the highway, because that's, um, you know, road hierarchy would, would dictate that you want to do that. You want to go from a, a highway, so we're going to go up to 12. I found that increments of 12 are really, really nice. And for this one, I want to do 14 to give you specific numbers. Uh, 14 units across. Now, if you don't have precision engineering or if you're building this on vanilla, you can still do a do this justice on vanilla. Um, 10 is where the line appears. You can you can just see the 10, the 10 line. So you see that line, that's 10 units. You don't get to see the number of units if you don't have mods, but with mods, it's pretty easy. So we want 14 across to get us over the highway because that'll give us plenty of space. You can see that that's even on both sides. That looks nice. 12 meters high, 14 units across. And then we'll go 12 units. If you're on PC, hit the home button. That'll take us to ground. So 12 units to ground. Uh, this is a big deal in North America, this interchange. Uh, you'll see them all over the place in North America. So a clover leaf has an issue called weaving. And by the way, I'm just going to be using the, um, the two-lane one-way road to design this, and then we'll end up converting it to highway ramps and things like that. But four units on the ends here. Rewind if you need to be reminded of anything. Feel free to pause the video, too, if you're following along. Um, but North America is filthy with these things. They are all over the place. They're a slightly better option than... Uh, than the clover leaf, in my opinion, because the clover leaf has what's called weaving, which is when, um, that was a seven by seven curve, by the way. You're about to see another one. Seven by seven, seven by seven, 10, nine, eight, seven units on both sides using the curve road tool. Uh, North America has a bunch of these because they're better than, than clover leaves. These, these limit the amount of weaving. They, uh, they are, they're very nice. You're, you've probably been on one whether you know it or not, is the thing. So we're starting with four units up, going in the same direction. I'm using right-hand traffic, so you can see our highway has traffic on the right. Um, you know, <laughs> forward traffic on the right, opposite traffic on the left. That's what right-hand traffic is. Um, so now we're going to do another 7x7. Seven seven. This one's going to look a little weird. We're going to have to use Move It to fix it. And you don't have to do it exactly like this if you're, if you're not into it. But this is how I recommend doing it. If you have Move It. If you have access to Move It. But here, this is going to break off. And we'll do 7x7. Seven seven. And part of what makes the, the way that I do it work and makes it cohesive is that I'm using all 7-unit curves the whole way around. With this little 4-unit thing so that the curve isn't right onto there. I want this to be 90 degrees is the point there. So now, um, I'll deconstruct this later. I'll say what it all, how it all works and everything. But for now, I just want to, I want to do another seven by seven and I want it to be here. So straight across from wherever this one ends, we'll do it the same on the other side using road guidelines. You can, you can see. So I want to do seven units away. That's eight units, seven units. And it's actually the intersection you can see that there's an X there, straight across from this one that we just made, and straight down from this one that we just made. So we're doing the same type of angle, seven units by seven units. And then you can continue this one down to the end. 
and then, and then. You can continue this one down to that one. And you can see there's a little overlap. I, I pointed it out earlier. There's a little overlap in the textures. We're going to use Move It to fix it. If you don't have access to Move It, you can, you can get away with using slightly different angles to make this happen. So to replicate that, once again, the intersection between those two spots from here and here, intersection 7 by 7, going towards your highway. 7 units. And then we'll, same deal, continue this down to where that one ends so they're even. Continue this one down to where that one becomes straight. That's good. Now these little end bits, the way that I've found is best to connect end, end bits. If you're trying to angle this to the road and you want it to look fairly nice, do freeform road tool and do a straight angle. It doesn't matter how far away it is with freeform road tool. Just do 90 deg or 180 degrees off of the source and then click the node you're aiming for and that'll Add some finality to that. Same here. Same thing down here. And I've got a trick for making these all the same on all the different sides. Um, so we want these to be similar. So let's say four units looks pretty nice to me. I'm using Anarchy, by the way. I'm using Road Anarchy to build where, where no man has built before. Build at angles that the game doesn't really want me to. And that's okay. So we'll do four by four, 29. This happens to land on a node here. So no problem. 4x4 four four curve, 29 meters. We're still in the freeform road tool right now. So there's that. We're doing it. Um, that works out. All the roads are backwards and, and messed up. But we'll fix that in a minute. And I want to do the same thing on the other side. Oh, wow, it works out. Okay. So never mind. There, <laughs> it actually worked so that the nodes are, are perfect for this. And they're straight across from each other because these are like the natural nodes that are built into the road, which doesn't usually happen. Just know that if you ever have an odd node that's in a different spot from the node next to it, and you want to, you want your interchange to be even like I do here, you can always, like the, here's an example, just built into the map. If you ever do 90 degrees on both of them, as close to as you can, you know, 90 degrees off the first road at least, and you do that, it'll actually move the node so they're straight across from each other. So then when you go to uh, when you go to connect that highway or connect the interchange to the highway, it can end at the same spot if you want it to. Now you don't always need that to happen. That's just I'm just being picky. Like here you can see this is what it looks like if they don't start and end, start and end at the same place. I didn't build that one as you can see because it's all crazy. I would never let that fly. Uh, this one they decided to end in the same place with with a silly little node there. That's going to cause problems potentially. I'm not going to play this map out. I'm just showing you the example of the interchange. But but yeah, usually I want my highway to begin and end at the same spot unless the road is curved or something. So to complete this, we've got to turn all the roads into, into what they're going to be and make them face the right direction. So a lot of these are backwards, and they're all the wrong type of roads. So we're going to use highway ramps to continue this on and turn them the correct direction. So that's an exit for the traffic that wants to go right. This would be the, the next logical step. And the whole thing would be to to add on the, the road that's actually going to get used here. Let's say that this one's going to the coast. Maybe there's some industry and a shipping route. Or maybe there's a nice little beach community. And maybe this is going inland towards a train station or towards a neighborhood or whatever. Um, but the way that this is going to work is the traffic exits here to go right onto this road. And this traffic here, if they wanted to make a left... Oops. Well, whatever. I'll... So this road is actually not supposed to be that. Ideally, I like using an asymmetrical road there, a three-lane asymmetrical road. You can do it with highway, or you can do it with the regular road. But for our purposes today, I'm going to try to keep this fairly vanilla, because so far this is all vanilla roads. I'd like to do it with just a regular, plain old road here. So this is just your basic one-way, other way. Or actually, there's a... It might be a DLC thing, but the National Road is totally fine for this. If you want to keep the whole interchange highway, go for it. Use a National Road here. So it's for the continuity of it. And this is correct. So the reason that this lane, that this one is bi-directional road, this is a, this is a right lane traffic, just bi-directional uh, two lane road. The reason we did that is so traffic can use this same road to exit. And in, in real life, there's probably some sort of median here, like some sort of actual, maybe a physical barrier or something. You could do this in real life, or you could add that with props later or however you'd like to do it. That's the gist. 
I'm going to do the same thing to the other side now. I'm going to get all my ramps and directions upgraded so they're all the correct direction. Which way is that going? The wrong way. Boom. boom. Uh, this, this thing as well. Cool. So we've got, we've got that. All the roads are in the correct direction. That's all good. Um, you can still see that the roads are a little messed up. So what you need to do to fix that is within move it, pick an angle on this road. I'm going to use the inner angle, I think, for this one. And I'm going to grab this node and hold control and just nudge it ever so slightly. You know, whatever the slightest amount is, the, the textures were overlapping. As long as they are one pixel away from one another, you know, click this, hold control, which puts it in like fine fine mode or whatever, and you'll find a spot. There we go. So eventually there's a nice little spot where it's no longer overlapping, and that is that makes it wonderful. <laughs> Click, hold control, nudge it till it stops shaking. There we go. That's that's what we want. We don't want any of the <laughs> none of the shininess, none of the that's that's two textures fighting for fighting for existence on the on the Z axis. Z axis? I think it would be the Z axis. So that is that is the idea. That's the shape of it. Um, there is some traffic manager required for this to work fully correctly. It can kind of work in its current state in a vanilla, non-modded type fashion. But what you're going to want to do is I'm going to pick the right, you know, the right lane. You can always use the right. There's it, it's symmetrical. So no matter which way you're looking at it, the right lane is the right lane. So we're going up. If they want to make a right hand turn, we want to force them using traffic manager and the lane connector. We want to force them to go right into the right lane. And same across the way. If they want to go what amounts to a left, they have to go all the way around the circle and then make a right. And the beauty of that, that that's the secret. It's not a secret, but that's the trick of the park low is that we don't want the traffic crossing over itself. Or we want to minimize that at least. The only spot where the traffic crosses over itself is here. So this this is a... Th this doesn't cross over itself, but that's the right-hand turn. And this left-hand turn, to get back on the highway going, we'll call it north. We'll say that way is north. So this traffic wants to go north. This traffic wants to go north, and it has to cross over, unfortunately, it has to cross over these two lanes, which are going to go straight through the intersection. But that's okay. That's better than That's better than the traffic coming off the highway having to cross, because it's we don't want this crossing like all of the lanes. We want to minimize the crossing is the idea. So, you know, that's that's a good way to accomplish that. And then these two end up going straight across is part of the trick. So to, to reiterate, to do it again on the other side, to recap, if the traffic wants to go right off the highway, they take a right into the first lane. If they want to go left, they go all the way around and they go here. They don't have the option to go left here because why would they want that? Like this road is set up perfect to swerve into this, right? That's the whole idea. This one's a right-hand turn because it has to be. This one's a left-hand turn because it has to be. Here are the conflicts. It is what it is. You know, there's going to be a little bit of crossover. Every time these lines cross, that's a conflict. But we've minimized it really effectively here. And there's just no conflict on this side. So these guys merge without issue, you know. Lane mathematics, some people call it. I've, I've heard it said once or twice. Um, and that's what it looks like. That's how it looks like managed. If you want to go crazy with the with the lane mathematics, as I've heard it called once again, you can take this down. We can go from three lanes down to two lanes. Whoa, -ho -ho, look at that. Three lanes down to two lanes. Three lanes down to two lanes. And they've started doing this in my area. I live in Northern Virginia, and there are some interchanges that they've made recently where they actually do this, where it goes, where one disappears, a lane, you lose a lane, and it goes away, and it goes down, and then when the traffic merges back in, it's not even merging, like this just has its own lane to come into. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do to make this look nice too, that's that's the idea, partial cloverleaf, partial cloverleaf in the Steam Workshop, this is all vanilla I believe, and I'll post a link to that below, this is me recreating that so you can see it and deconstruct it. Um, I'm probably going to get this get this looking a little bit fancier and maybe run some traffic through it. We'll see how it looks. So here we are about maybe 45 minutes to an hour later. I've kind of been puttering around, having a little bit of fun. Um, starting a city is one of my favorite things to do. I don't think I'll play off of this one, but 
uh, this does <laughs> this makes it abundantly clear how the uh, how the interchange is working. Um, you can see here, buried it in trees, threw some rocks under there, you know, whatever. It's a little uh, <laughs> it's a little heavy handed compared to the detailing on the on the rest of it, i.e., none. There's there's no detailing anywhere else. But yeah, covered it in trees to make it look like like somebody did it on purpose and um, opted for some. This is super optional, but you there's a mod called intersection marking tool. You can add chevrons, so the the chevrons on the uh, the exits and entrances. You can connect the connect the lanes under here, really nice. Um, I was super heavy handed here. I think I did probably too much. I don't fully. I haven't really studied how interchanges use um, use lines within them or lack thereof. So I just I just went crazy. I just like connected almost everything. And but visually, you can see exactly what's going on in these intersections. Um, as far as these intersections go, also, I've I've opted to. You could do a timed traffic light with with a lot of effort in Traffic Manager. A timed traffic light that would allow some of these would always get a green light, like this one would always get a green light, and this one would always get a green light, and then you would need these folks to stop periodically to allow this left to happen. Um, I've opted against doing that for now, and instead I've gone with a system where everybody can go all the time because the only conflict is this one. Wow. That is another follow. I, sw I I didn't plan this. I don't know how often people follow when I'm when I'm not streaming, but apparently today it's all the time. <laughs> well, shout out to whoever that was. I'll I'll let you know in stream tonight. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk about it. But yeah, so this left turn because it's going to hit oncoming traffic, they have to yield. So these guys will stop. But otherwise, this can clear. Like these these the rest of these can clear all the time. Same with this left here. Okay. Well, whatever. I told them to yield. Whether they decide to actually heed the yield is up to them. But yeah, this uh, this exists. This is all up and running. Uh, there's a little industrial over here. This is all just to, to show the interchange. Um, as a final... Like, I, I built up a little bit of... Uh, you know, there's there's stuff there just to show you how this works. But just to just just to show you what's what, let's, let's follow this guy for a moment and, and we'll, oh yeah, there's a, pedestri a pedestrian bridge here just to keep people out of the interchange. You'll see people using that super frequently. Um, guys, pedestrian, sorry, did I say interchange? Overpass. Pedestrian overpasses are super helpful if you want to keep people from crossing in your interchange. If you're assuming your city is um, separated by a highway, which happens all the time. And here we go, we're exiting. They're probably gonna make a right into the residential area. Yeah, very nice. Okay, little little close, kind of tailgating. And here we are in the residential area. I've opted for a bike lane in here just to just so people can bike if they want to down the main road or down the uh, through this through the little uh, the windy roads of the they're not windy but the gridded roads of our residential area. Uh, but yeah, this this has the power to support many times the the traffic that this is going to, that this is going to show. Like this is little industrial area, little residential, little this, little of that. Some of it's high density, but still like this is handling it optimally. So I could, I would bet I could run this entire half of the map just about with, with this type of density, with just this interchange. So it's super capable. Uh, the partial cloverleaf, very nice interchange. I showed you how to build it. You can build it yourself. And Hey, if you want it, if you just want to plop it in your city, this is in the workshop um, under Perfect Park Low by Yumble TV. Guys, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I have been Yumble, uh, Yumble of Yumble TV. Uh, check me out on Twitch. You know, come say hi, come see what's up. Feel free to subscribe to this channel as more content is going to come out uh, like this. Feel free to fo uh, follow me on Twitch. Feel free to whatever. Join the Discord. Subscribe to this. Subscribe to that. Follow, like, tweet, whatever. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much.